And welcome everyone to Really Is For The Global Goals. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards. Along with me today, we have Doreen Bogdan, the Director of Development at ITU. Doreen, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, happy to be here. Director of Development, can you explain to me, what, what do you do in this uh, important role right now? So I'm with the International Telecommunications Union, which is the oldest organization in the UN system. Dates back to 1865, so we're 154 years old. Uh, and our mission is all about advancing uh, global connectivity. And we do that through our work in radio communications, so assigning spectrum to uh, different services, through standardization, so working on equipment and service standards. And then the part that I lead, which I think is the most important part, uh, is the part on development. And so that's really about working with countries to try to set up enabling regulatory and policy frameworks to attract the needed investment to connect the other half of the world's people. So we really focus on policy and regulatory support, on capacity building, helping to uh, ensure that the right skills are there for markets to thrive. Um, we do lots of uh, e-applications work, e-government, uh, digital financial services, cybersecurity support. So sort of a range of things, and uh, we have 13 offices around the world, and our main uh, headquarters are in Geneva. So Doreen, uh, in such an interconnected world, now with communication, I'm able to speak with anyone, whether I'm playing Fortnite, or whether I'm on a Zoom call with another business client, um, or just over the phone, simply. Uh, but also, our society is very disconnected now. What are some of the discussions that you're having with your staff and your teams in terms of how to uh, be aware of these ramifications? So I, we're sort of focused on two parts. And I would say the first part is focusing on the 51% of the world that's actually connected. Um, so looking at whether they're connected in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say meaningful, uh, there's issues like affordability, um, accessibility, availability, uh, I would say relevance, making sure that the content uh, that they, they need uh, is available in local languages. So sort of the first part of our focus is really on the, the meaningfulness of the connectivity. Uh, but the second part, which perhaps is the most important part, is trying to uh, come up with mechanisms to connect the other 49% of the world's population uh, that are not playing Fortnite. Uh, because they're not connected. Uh, and so that's really a big challenge because when we look at how we brought the first 51% online, uh, some say that was sort of easy, um, but how are we gonna get that other 49% online? And that's really the big challenge, uh, the big development challenge. So are you working on getting like fiber optic cables to different countries and, and different streaming services? What are some of the projects that you were working on and could you provide us maybe a couple of specific examples? Well, so there's a range of technology solutions. I mean, sure. from, from fiber to satellite, and there's lots of incredible new satellite projects out there that will bring you know, thousands of satellites in the next couple of years, and we'll have seamless connectivity everywhere. Um, but I would say we're much more focused on first getting the environment right, because you really need that policy framework to be in place to get the investment. You need to make sure that um, if a school is connected in a rural area that it's going to be sustainable. So we, we're also working on you know, a number of, of factors linked to connectivity and not just bringing the technology there. One of the, I would say, most exciting endeavors that, uh, that we're working on is something with UNICEF and other partners um, focused on school connectivity. Uh, we believe that education is really the key to um, tackling some of the greatest development challenges that the world faces. And if we can figure out a way to connect the world's schools uh, and bring education to those that don't have it, then we can try to tackle um, the issues around growing youth unemployment, uh, the rising youth populations, in, in particular in sub-Saharan Africa, making sure that young people uh, have 21st century skills so that they can be employable. Uh, we really think it's key that we, that we tackle uh, connecting every school, connecting every classroom, and ensuring that young people uh, have the opportunities that they deserve so that they can, they can thrive in today's economy. What are some of the other things that need to come into play in order for 
this connectivity to happen? Is it like energy, uh, like the infrastructure? What are some of the things you need to have in this framework before you make that pitch? Well, obviously infrastructure, infrastructure is key and certainly electricity is an important component, uh, but there's lots of interesting, innovative technological solutions using solar panels uh, where, you know, we're seeing good progress and we're seeing things happen in, in rural areas. We, uh, some months ago, launched a, a very exciting initiative in a rural area in Niger. Um, and it, it's a smart village project where we've connected uh, a village uh, and brought to that village a number of services. So from agriculture to uh, e-health services to e-education uh, and by trying to tackle a village as a whole uh, and bringing those services to the, the, the population that previously didn't have uh, access to that kind of information. Uh, we're pretty excited about the results that that project will bring uh, and hopefully we can replicate that in other countries and in other villages. And Doreen, have you been on foot at, at any of these locations? Absolutely. I have traveled. I took up my position, I should have said before, in January. Oh, okay. um, and I have been on the road almost three weeks every month. Uh, traveling around the world and as I cover development obviously my focus is on developing countries. Um, I recently um, came back from Vanuatu, a Pacific island yeah, that heard of it. Uh, was quite devastated some years ago when Cyclone Pam hit them uh, and you can still see the the impact of what that cyclone did so another one of our big focuses is in emergency communications so working with countries to make sure they have national emergency telecommunications plans uh, that they do trainings before, simulations, so they know how to respond when a disaster is coming. And Vanuatu was well prepared, but you know sometimes we see that no matter how prepared a country can be, those kinds of natural disasters can surprise us, and the devastation is shocking. Um, I was also recently in um, outside of Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, where we went to visit a number of schools. Uh, we're trying to drive efforts around bringing young people, attracting young people to STEM, but in particular girls, uh, because as you may know in the technology space, yeah. not a lot of women out there, uh, and we hope that we can attract young girls to STEM fields and hopefully um, you know, push the next generation of, of, of women in tech and, and hopefully women leaders in tech. Um, and we did visit a number of schools that actually had computers, uh, but the computers weren't connected, and you know there was no uh, there was no internet access. But yet these young people are so eager to learn, um, and if we can you know sort of channel uh, that energy and interest that these young people have and bring to them uh, the technology solutions that can help them benefit and learn, I think the results will be incredible. Well, very thanks for sharing. And I, I do know Vanuatu because I know Vanuatu is the first random fact, but they're the first country to ever ban plastic diapers. Ah. Did you know that? Now you know. So, <laughs> I, and I had the opportunity to go scuba diving there. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, you did? Yes. I mean, it's, it's spectacular. In the point you were hitting on about disaster relief, mm -hmm. I also can relate to that because I spoke with the people who provided um, the communications for the U.S. Virgin Islands mm -hmm. when the uh, hurricane went out mm -hmm. and how much of a struggle that was and what it did to the economy there until they got those uh, wires connected and back up and going. Yeah. So I think it's a really interesting issue and we're happy to have people like you taking it on. So the last question I'm going to ask you, Doreen, is what is your qu uh, definition of a real leader? Of a... Of a real leader. Oh, of a real leader. Um, a real leader to me is, is someone that, uh, determination, uh, persistence, bravery, um, and just taking it on and, and driving it forward. Um, we do have some real leaders out there and um, it's an exciting time for leadership because there's lots that can be done. Um, and, and I really think determination is a, is a key factor. Doreen, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank Doreen you. Bogdan, I'm Kevin Edwards telling you always to go out there, be determined, be brave, and always keep it real. Thanks, Doreen. Thank you.
Thanks very much.